Did you learn something? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't share, but I learned. Where are you going? Um, and uh, quite impressive, uh, I saw Tarkan II on the uh, German Youth uh, Championship in uh, Oberhausen we talked. He was there with a U15, with a U20, U18 and a U21 team. And uh, uh, he just today he showed me his uh, team rooster for uh, his club. And he has, uh, uh, in every category, he has uh, two teams. He has two teams in the U15 uh, uh, girls, uh, two men, uh, yeah, boys and girls, two teams in the U18 uh, boys and girls, two teams U20. It's just amazing. Uh, he showed They're me. They're growing. They are, they are growing fast. And they are really, really well uh, organized uh, by Tarkan. And he does a really great job. And this is in one of the few nations where actually the trainers get paid. Not just a little bit, but really a salary, right? Yeah. Like in Colombia. I mean, here in Germany, uh, they are paying a little bit, um, how you call it uh, yeah. in English. Yeah, but um, there it's interesting to talk really about the different system of the coaches, yeah. uh, rugby coaches in the world, because uh, um, uh, in Colombia, they are uh, paid by the club, by the club uh, members, so they uh, pay for the pool time. of the coach to the different tournaments and everything so that's I think uh, um, coaches are quite crucial uh, in the development of a team and uh, of a club they and are they are very crucial not quite they are they, they are the the, the, the the terminator factor on a team yes the team is yes. what the coach decides the team to be I mean either you are a leader as a coach and then you can lead that team yes. or you are one more playmate and then that's it and uh, there's a lot of responsibility in being a coach and me and Lorena, we both know this by heart. Um, but there's also a lot of joy if you have a, a team working with you. And uh, if you love on the water rugby and you want to share your knowledge, being a coach is uh, the best you can do because it's, it's so... Um, but you have to be outgoing to be a coach. You have to like to be with people, to talk to people. And uh, you, you, you should be able to organize and you should be able to uh, be followed just by example and uh, I think uh, talking more about uh, um, um, coaches and the structure of coaches uh, worldwide in the global development of underwater rugby should be a quite interesting uh, theme so now next game so Ege against Flipper uh, interesting flipper for sure, a strong team. Um, thank you, Osvaldo, uh, for your compliment. Happy you have a good uh, uh, a transmission. Sound. Greetings to Colombia. Venezuela. Ah, this is Venezuela. <laughs> Big Colombia. Ah, no, they are, ah they okay, are yeah, got it. Yeah, sure, Venezuela. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I think, well, I don't know. Uh, my bet is on Ege here. Uh, they are, right? yeah, they are we here. They are there with a full team. Uh, Tarkan is playing too. Uh, and Hakan. Uh, all the strong players are in the team. And let's see what uh, they. They are getting also a little bit of support from the government, right? I mean, they're. Uh I'm not, I'm not 100 for sure. Okay. Not right now anymore. Okay. Uh, not sure. But uh, I think these are uh, themes you shouldn't talk about in a tournament. Um, so, Ege, yeah. Um, what we saw last year, um, which was Ege University, which was quite different, a uh, different team. But uh, in every other transmission we saw, uh, strong in every field, uh, for checking defending, attacking, a uh, lot of speed, a lot of physical prowess, a lot of uh, um, will to go through and go um, for the opponent basket. So, but, but Flipper is also experienced, experienced players, experienced team. And uh, it will be an interesting game to watch 
Um, but I think uh, Eggy will dominate. Um, you think? Yes, I think. I think it will be a, a 2 0 or a 2 1 uh, in the end. That, that would be my guess. But Flipper will be strong for sure. Um, but my guess is on, on Eggy. So, since we have a little bit of time, the coaches are not yet in the water and uh, the players are doing uh, diving exercises. Um, talking about coaches, it would be interesting to see the different uh, ways how coaches are um, trained and uh, how the licenses is working all over the world. How they do it in uh, Turkey, how they do it in Colombia, how they do it uh, in, in different uh, parts of Europe. Here in Germany we have to uh, uh, at least uh, spend I think 60 hours in the basic training as a coach and then uh, plus some 30 hours in a specialized training. So for my uh, speciality in uh, uh, competitive underwater games it was or orienting uh, dive. Oh. Orientation diving. diving orientation. Fin swim. Fin swimming, orientation uh, diving and on the water rugby. And uh, it was quite a lot of time and energy to invest to get uh, the license. And you have to refresh it every four years with 50 hours of... Uh, 15, uh, 15 uh, yeah. hours of... Uh, uh, seminars, seminars workshops. courses, workshops, where you refresh your knowledge. Okay, one of the uh, referees is down already. Probably the second one is playing without a, a, a air tank. Um, Esteban is asking if we're having problems with the sound. You tell us. Is it too um, had too much interference, or um, as a cut, or what is uh, the? So we are in the game and uh, Flipper is in blue and Ege in white and Flipper is putting hard pressure on the, the Ege basket and uh, they almost cannot get free. Now we, they have a chance to lose the ball already in this torn on one fight. Uh, that was a fast pressure move from uh, Flipper. Um, Esteban, you were asking us if we have uh, trouble issues with the sound. What's the problem? Um, what, what do you hear? Well, what don't you hear? Please tell us so we can fix it and find out what the problem is. Uh, from our side, uh, from our techie guys, we don't see any problems. So back in the game. Um, flipper against uh, Ege. So uh, this is... Hold on. This is the eighth game. So Turkey against Denmark and we're in the middle of the pool. Have a cluster there. And uh, the bodily fights are quite heavy. It's it's quite physical. Now we have an attack from uh, Ege. Three They're going in. One. Three. But uh, the goalkeeper managed quite good to hold the ball. And now Flipper recovered the ball and is trying to swim away from the basket. But um, they have some obstruction from the Jaeger players. Now they're okay, still he, within the five can he, can you please tell? You can hear us well. Are we not loud enough? Is there a, a disturbance in the transmission? Um, um, please tell us what the problem if you're not un, if we're not understandable. Well, uh, Flipper has just attacked very harsh on the goalkeeper and just barely made it defending call from the referee uh, free throw against Ege. Yeah. so Kenny Cardenas uh, said he, you cannot hear us well um, please uh, 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 tell us what um, be a little more pre precise so we can probably correct what the problem is So this is a tough game and uh, both teams have the will, the experience and the knowledge and uh, the physical fitness to go through these two times 15 minutes and play tough. Um, now Flipper is pushing again, but didn't succeed. The forechecking of uh, Ege is quite good. And uh, now we have an attack the, the attacker tries to get from the top of the goalkeeper. 
pushes him away, tears him away. And now we have a little bit of chaos on the close side of the basket. Um, yeah, there's a lot of pressure around Ege right now. And uh, Ege has difficulties to break the attack pattern of uh, uh, the Danish team and to go in attack mode. Um, right now, the, they it looks a little bit like the Danish can build their attack pattern on free will. Now we have a on fight on the, on the close side call from the referee, free throw against Flipper. Pushing with our ball apparently. Well, at least now. Yeah, I'm surprised that they couldn't, you know, get the attack and actually it got quite risky um, while the, the attack. So, yes, we have a little problem with the sound, but it's not all the time, Kenny, is that right? It's just sometimes uh, uh, for a short time where you can't hear us or there is a, a stuttering, but then it's fine again. Um, so, in the middle of the game, uh, middle of the pool, Flipper tries to break through, but is now uh, tackled by uh, an egg, the, the Flipper player with the ball is tackled by an Egge player, and uh, he recovered the ball, and now Egge is going in attack mode, trying to break through in the half of Flipper, but is stopped on the surface, and uh, I think we have a cluster on the surface. Call from the referee, uh, out of the water. White free throw, I heard right here. Yeah, it's a free against throw against Flipper. Flipper. Yeah, five minutes to go, and uh, anything could happen in this match right now. Five minutes to go in the first half. So, uh, Ege is attacking one player going Again. in, yes. quite in the height of the, the basket to the goalie, but is tackled away by a Flipper player. And uh, now we're on the surface. Flipper player tries, looks like he tries to swim through on the surface. But uh, Ege recovered the ball. It's a really fast, close game. So the, as soon as they get close to the basket, there is tackling. There is, there is a tough physical holding. Um, yes. They cannot really um, approach with uh, more than, well, right now, exactly three of them are coming in and uh, Flipper is defending with three as well. But it's quite controlled, I mean, they... I think that uh, right now both teams look like quite evil, uh, equal. Uh, evil. In, in <laughs> evil. <laughs> yes, they're, but you know... Um, All from the referee. They're taking their time, I mean, right Holding now... Holding up a mask. It's not as a fast-paced game as we saw, for instance, against Colombia and Finland, or as Molde and Malmo. It's a little bit slower right now from the pace here. Yes and no. I think the the um, the close quarter fights, these dog fights they have, this is more faster than in the games before. Move when they come into each other. There's a lot of of uh, body movement in in yes. these holding the tackling the, situations. I'm, I'm saying going oh the flipper uh, attacker just got the ball and attacked the goalkeeper in the back, but uh, was successfully called. And we uh, have now a flipper player flipper on the egg basket. Yes. But what I mean from the fast pace changing from one basket to the other one, losing the ball, going and coming. I mean, like we had with Colombia and Finland and. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't move fast. I'm just saying that the pace of attacking to one basket or to the other uh, is not as uh, fast as we have seen in uh, some of the games before. So right now we have a free throw against Ege and Fleber is trying to get into position and 
they are passing the ball and trying to get, but they're still like yeah, three meters away and taking their time. Now one of the flippers go underneath the goalkeeper, two of them actually, but uh, the eager player that just swim into the pool could stall that ball. Um, however, they uh, was recording about the fighting on the surface on the on the close corner and it's almost no defender right now just just save the situation the goalkeeper and the defender of uh, the Ega team but it was a close one and if keep flipper keeps oh that was a little bit of a cake in the from the goalkeeper of Ega toward the attacker it looked like at least if flippers keeps the control of the ball and try to build up waves it doesn't i mean it looked like uh the Turkish could have a mistake because they're not really very solid in their position. My feeling about it. They are just... Um, they react a little bit to Flipper and right now uh, Flipper just stole the basket. They have free throw against Ege. They're not really completely concentrated, the Turkish team. Somehow I don't see them really on the game like the Flipper uh, players are. Yeah, it's and true. It's true. I, I, I agree with you. Flipper player has been holding the basket for a little while. I don't know. And now he's replaced by the by the by the. And this uh, shouldn't happen. Another player. And that shouldn't happen. Uh, meaning. Yeah. From the Turkish side. Yes. Uh, this is also fast thinking from it the with this With these waves coming in um, from the open side, uh, one after another of uh, the flipper players yeah. to the Turkish basket. And now we have the, the basket open, totally open. And that was quite close. There yeah, was there's already uh, the, th this, uh, the four to the fifth situation have been really close. Yeah. So I think it's a matter of time. So at the end of the first half, uh, flipper against Ege. So I talked to the tech guys. Um, they uh, confirmed we have a problem with the sound. They fixing it right now. Um, will take probably a little while. Yeah, but thanks for the feedback. I mean, yes. keep telling Please us because we exactly. need to know. Um, so if you have any have questions or if uh, something's not working I mean out. New technology this year. And because of that, of course, you know. Yeah, uh, new cameras, and we always try to improve. Needs to be. Uh, and I out. also got an update, so. Uh, you got uh, an update. Yeah, I got an update, and that not working. F I'm not functionally uh, the way it should. I'm tired. It is the first day of the Champions Cup. We are on game number uh, eight, and you're already tired. That's bad, bad news. It's m Don't probably tell my it too age. Loud because you always take a excuse to take it's over. It's probably my age. Uh, uh, I'm feeling right now. So, so interesting. Yeah. Two, let's let's talk about what we saw in the game. Let's talk about underwater rugby. Let's talk about underwater rugby. Um, I think that you're going to lose. I in, think in my flipper. Bet. Yep. It looks like flipper have it. I have to the agree. Uh, flipper is quite strong, and. Uh, uh, Egg is. Um, it's, n it's like not concentrated because. Yeah, uh, because with the situation with the with the goal we saw, where where the flipper players stole away the the basket two times and um, uh, even changed themselves on the basket, playing goalies for Ege, that shouldn't happen. In the second change, uh, something should happen. Um, but but you don't know. Uh, they have their strong players with them. Uh, Tarkan is, is, is in uh, Harkan and a lot of other players we know. So, um, interesting to see, but uh, um, I don't know how you say it in English. If, if you have more edge, yeah, the, the flipper has the better edge in well, this game right now. You know, teams are like a person. If uh, you have bad days, you teams just have are like persons in a way that you. You have to work together, and if everyone in the team is not doing good or have a bad day, then the team yep. has a bad day. Absolutely. And then you are used to have. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen so much consistency in a team as I have seen by Molde. True. I cannot mention many other Orcas as well. I haven't seen bad dates in Orca games so far. In they get interesting. Have interesting. Molde. But there's some others that are more inconsistent. Yeah. Interesting point. What what is the uh, deciding factor of being uh, uh, consistent? And both Orcas and Molde doing a lot of concentration, a lot of mind work. Mental mental, mental work. training, correct. Yeah. So yes. it could be in the quite a decisive factor. So let's get back in the game. Uh, the break is over.
and um, the next 10 minutes should be on uh, soon. Screen, yep. So far it's zero zero. Anything could happen, but it From looks what we've like seen. Flipper is dominating, and Ege is not really or hasn't been in the game and so far. So if they continue playing like that, then they might get a score from Flipper. <laughs> so uh, could we have a picture, please, back in the game? I think people it's want nice to see, to see yourself <laughs> and banana. Um, um, so we cannot comment when we don't see the game. And the people cannot see the game either. <laughs> Guys, could you put the pictures back? We don't see the game. Ha! Yeah. There it okay. is. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Um, the first seconds of the second half started uh, Champions Cup 2016 here in Berlin. And it's uh, Castores. Uh, no, it's not Castores. That's uh, wrong uh, no, too. <laughs> it's uh, it's Flipper from uh, Denmark in blue against uh, Ege from Turkey in white and we have a call from the referee uh, it's too hard playing um, with the fins, kicking with the fins that's a nice sign, I never thought yeah. this one <laughs> it's, it's, it's quite nice so uh, rough fin playing <laughs> that's called rough fin playing um, and this is a free throw against uh, Ege so let's say uh, if they realize um, uh, they should be more concentrated in the game and uh, if they changed uh, something. Well, now, but this situation I was, this was a typical situation we saw when, when two players uh, interfere with each other and don't um, um, uh, uh, yeah, then become then more. They, they, they subtract each other. Yeah, so yeah. Um. I have seen games in which the one half of the time I was playing in a way that the, 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 the team was losing. And um, so it's a call from a referee other, again. And the other half of the, uh, the other half time, the, the team really achieved to focus and to change the game around. So the, the, the question here is the again really can get to that point yeah. and yeah. be a little bit more in control of the game. Yeah. That's, you know, we're tracking with three and. It, it's funny, Flipper I think it's, it's really a concentration problem they have here. There was the many times you see AK interfering with each other. That's uh, never seen this before. Hello, Levin Kavas. Uh, uh, thank you very much for the greetings. My name is not Thomas, but Wolf, but nevertheless, <laughs> thank you very much. And we're happy you're watching. And uh, thumbs up for AK. Hope you're fine over there in Turkey. So. It's Flipper still zero, seven the minutes left. Corner and so uh, Flipper is coming, coming in. Already they... It's, um, but, but, but Flipper does not succeed and the referees realize the, the uh, game is getting physical and more physical. And uh, you hear it in the sounds of the uh, horn when they need to uh, use it very much to stop the game. Um, there is a lot of uh, uh, adrenaline uh, pushing. So Ege has the ball, and it's a free throw against Flipper. Let's see if can uh, Ege can uh, execute it and uh, get an advantage. That no, that was, that was I mean, interference. You cannot attack the one in possession of the ball before. I mean, every. When you have the execution of a free throw, you have three seconds to throw the ball, and until then, no one can attack the one that is uh, doing the the free throw. So, well, there was some kind of bad execution because now the free throw was done to Flipper, and we couldn't see very well. And now we have Eger defending, and the player from Flipper fighting against two. Turks passing the ball and then they're coming two over the open side trying to block defender and just attacking from above but uh, that didn't work out and the uh, player from Eger recovered the ball and swimming through to the other side and something happened from above another call from the referee 
free throw against uh, Ege. Against, uh, again, this uh, beautiful sign he does with his uh, hands. Uh, rough fin playing. Is this Bob? Bob Robinson? Probably. Could be. I can. But it, it's, it's a typical movement. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, no. uh, free throw for Flipper against Ege. Three meters uh, away. And, and he gave the ball to the defender right on his back. Very nice move. So they are free and just come in from the open side to the basket of Ege, pushing in. And uh, there's another one from. Uh, and uh, here we go. Yes. Score. Score for Flipper. I mean, it was amazing because he was fighting against four. And but did you see he scored? I don't. I, I think he passed the ball on. Yeah, I think he, uh, yeah. he, pa well, he it was well done. But uh, he was fighting against four. I mean, while he was passing the ball, so I mean, he did a good job there. So this year we don't have the repetition, but again, new software, new cameras, new everything. So. Um, so timeout for Ege. Um, they should really get into the zone now. Um, um, it's not over for them, and. Um, they can easily Flipper seems more concentrated. They have more of the edge um, right now. And it's interesting because Ege, um, they have their strong players. <coughs> they should be able to fend off Flipper and uh, launch an uh, attack that should be successful. Um, but... Uh, uh, Champions Cup is not like uh, from year to year you have the same teams with the same uh, uh, players. Uh. Well, well, maybe players, but but like you said, the, the consistency in playing is not every year the same. It changes, it changes with bit, the yeah. players, but it also changes within a team. Yeah. And uh, uh, well, let's see what they can do against Flipper. Maybe they need a little push. Here we go. Our uh, time all is well, over. We, we know exactly how it works. We have those days in a team where absolutely nothing works. <laughs> and yes. you, are, you came out of the water so frustrated because you don't understand uh, what is going on there. And if you uh, consider that, you know, still they're experienced, experienced players, but of course they are very nervous. Yeah, there is excitement. There, um, so a lot of factors that yeah. can play. So if you tuned in right now, you're watching Champions Cup 2016 here in Berlin. Ege in white against uh, Ege from Turkey in white against Flipper from Denmark in blue. And it's 1-0 for uh, Flipper. Um, this is the 28th uh, Champions Cup. And uh, we have 14 uh, men teams and 10 women teams and 14 different nations in three days playing for the best club team in the world. So uh, Flipper is uh, building slowly uh, their attack mode. And uh, they, it, it looks quite easy for them to play around uh, the Turkish for checking defense. So time is working for Flipper now. They have two and a half minutes left and uh, they lead 1-0. So thank you, Johanna, for, uh, for the feedback. Uh, our technicians told us it's coming in waves, uh, the, the disturbance, and it should be fixed, but it uh, will take probably a little bit of time. The next game, yes, uh, uh, is the Castores game. Uh, question in the chat. So, yeah, Flipper is looking for an uh, opportunity to score one more, but apart from that, they're just playing around uh, the Turkish basket and uh, keep the Ege player busy. Um, while the clock is ticking and it's one and a half minutes left, so if uh, Flipper can keep the game up like this, it should be possible for them uh, to win this game without much 
effort. They don't have to score anymore. They just keep the ball up. And uh, they did so for the last 30 seconds. And the time is ticking against Ege. We are playing most of the time right now in the closed half um, of the pool next to the Ege basket in the corner. And uh, the Ege for checking. Now they are succeeded in uh, snatching the ball away and try to counter attack. And now we see a fast counter attack. There is uh, one, two players going in, but uh, the flipper player succeeded in snatching the ball away from the Ege player. And we have a call from the referee in the half of the flipper pool. And it's a call from the referee outside outside of uh, the pool. So it's a free throw against Ege, as we see from the referee. The goalie is already on the basket. Uh, the, the Ege player don't see exhausted, they just don't look this much in the game. So it's 1-0, one, one second left, that's it. Interesting. Um, well done by uh, Denmark, well done by Flipper. Um, they just needed one goal, they scored and uh, Ege was not able to equalize and fight off uh, or find a, a way to break through yeah. this uh, keeping the ball pattern of Flipper. Yeah, now we have...